And uh, so we'll welcome you to our second Friday of the month, Healing School, number eight. Uh, welcome, Mr. Plan, friends. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad you, that you're on. It's an honor and privilege to be before you again one more time this evening to do Healing School. Uh, and so let's, let's get invited to prayer and what we need to talk about tonight. I thought the God, I thank you for this time. I thank you for another opportunity to teach and talk about healing and for this healing school class on this Friday. I want to ask you to touch us all those who are come to come online, those who are comfortable to come here for the game night or be here for healing school. Lord, that they be attentive, that they receive what, is, what you have for me to say tonight, and that it be a blessing that lives be changed, healed, set free. And Lord, we take authority and, and, and uh, Take authority with the enemy who may try to hinder anything tonight. We bind him and curse him. Mm -hmm. As a father, in the name of Jesus, we say you have your way. Heal those who need to be healed. And have, not, have our open heart to receive your word tonight. They may be healed, whoever it may be, whatever they need healing for, we ask you now to have your way this evening. Amen. 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 Well, all my brothers and five friends again. Welcome to another healing school. Now, this, tonight is going to be different than what I've been doing because we have game night in a few, in, in about a half hour after this is over. So I'm not going to cover what I normally cover. I'm just going to get right to it. So, however, what I do want to do is just give you a little reminder, a little reminder of what we have been talking about for the past seven months. And we're talking about uh, healing, of course, because this is a healing school. And I say it to you as a reminder, one, that we need not to what? Watch our fear or watch uh, of how fear comes in on us when we are told by the doctors, whoever, that you got this, you got that. And what's going to do this? What happens right away, human nature, fear jumps right in on us, right? And then the devil is going to use that to, to, against you because you're so emptied about what the doctor said and what you're going through that he now wants you to start fearing. And, and even though you know the word of God, yet fear wants to come in. And so I want to encourage you not to let fear come in, even though it's easier said than done, but because the devil wants to use that to come against you, to get you all fretful, get you not to trust God, get you to, to start worrying. And, and when you start worrying, that can cause also is right. Now you, you're going to be worse than you were before because you're in fear. And so 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the power of love and of a sound mind. Amen? So we are not to fear. And so like I said, I'm not going to cover what I normally cover. What I want to talk about today, uh, well, we may, may do this real quick. So for the past few months, we've been talking about healing, and we talked about uh, in order for your healing to manifest, number one, you must believe that God wants you healed. Mm. Hello? In order for your healing, your healing, notice I say your healing, you must make up in your mind, your personal life, in spite of what you've been hearing, that God wants you healed. Amen? You're not going to get healed if you can't believe God wants you healed. Let me ask you a question. Didn't you believe God wanted you saved? And aren't you saved? Well, he also wants you healed, right? And I know everybody's, you know, you, you'll hear it. And you, you, you know, it's the Bible nowhere, but you're going to hear it. God doesn't heal everybody. Well, listen, let me ask you a question. Does everybody get saved? Everybody does get saved, but yet no one says God doesn't want to save everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, because people are seeing other people not getting healed, right away they want to denounce it to God's not healing everybody, and that God doesn't, God doesn't heal everybody, and or want everybody healed. Well, that's not true. Just because I get healed doesn't mean God doesn't want to heal. Amen. That's another, another, another subject. But in order for you, if you're believing God for healing, in order for you to be healed, you must make up in your mind first that He wants you healed. Amen. Yeah. Then we talked about, yeah, I'm going to close real quick. We talked about, then you must. Well, first of all, believe God for your healing. All right? You got to first understand that he wants you healed, and then you have to believe. Just like you believe for salvation, you need to believe God for healing. Amen? It's a faith walk, correct? And my brothers and sisters, friends, all us Christians have done, are doing the biggest faith walk we could ever do. You know what the biggest faith is? 
The biggest faith walk is the fact that we're believing that when we close our eyes, we are going to heaven. You're already walking by faith. Amen? Mm -hmm. So that same faith you are believing God is going to, when you close your eyes, you're going to wake up in heaven. It's the same faith you need to believe God now that by his stripes you are healed. Amen? Mm -hmm. Then we talk about you need to have an expectation. You got to first know that God wants you healed. You got to believe God for you healed. And then when you pray and talk to God about healing, expect him to that for your healing to come to pass. Amen. Uh, I said there's no need for you to go to God if you don't have an expectation. What's the point of going to God if you don't have expect ex, if you do not expect him to change whatever you're going through around? And in this case, healing. So why go to God to talk about healing and you don't expect him to heal you? Right, man? It's a again, it's a faith walk. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. So you must believe. Or understand, get in your mind that God wants to heal. You must believe it. You must have an expectation. Then you must start confessing faith scriptures and healing scriptures. Confess what you want to happen and not what is happening to you. You have to do what Mark 11, 23 says. Really, girl, I say unto you, who shall say unto the mountain, be not removed and be not cast into the sea, and shall not doubt your heart, but believe those things which you say mm -hmm. to come to pass you. To have whatsoever you say. It. Therefore, what some things you believe when you pray, believe that you receive it and you should have it. Who's in charge here? Mm -hmm. Who's the top of that person? It's all about you, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And you'll see that in about your authority. It's all about you, what you believe, what you say, what you and, and shall not doubt in your heart. Amen. So you have to confess your healing. Once you get into God's word. And study and, and get into God's first words, faith scripture is concerned, and healing scripture, then you need to confess out of your mouth what you want to happen. Speak mm -hmm. healing and not sickness. Amen? Mm -hmm. So you must first make up in your mind that God wants you healed. You got to believe for your healing. You got to have a high expectation that you are going to be healed. Or should I say it this way? The manifestation of your healing is going to come to pass. Mm -hmm. Amen? And then, and then you have to then believe or, or confess out of your mouth what you want to have. Amen. And mm -hmm. God wants to, God wants to heal you. And so you need to confess it by his grace. I'm healed double in the name of Jesus. You're not gonna put this on me. I'm healed. Mm -hmm. I believe for my healing and, and sickness and disease. You will not take over my life. You will, I will not deal with you. I'm standing in faith. In other words, confess, confess, confess. You're healing. Why? Because, uh, yeah, Mark 11, 23 says you're going to have what you say. Mm -hmm. Hello? Mm -hmm. Not what the doctor said, what you say. Mm -hmm. And of course, you, know, you are going to have what the doctor says if you believe what the doctor says. Amen. amen. Come on, come on, amen, amen. All right, then, not only that, you then have to, number four, have to believe for the impossible. Amen? Mm -hmm. Become the past. Mark 9, 23 says, all things are possible to them to hurt of those of them that believe. believe. Well, my brothers and family friends, all things are possible. I like to say it this way. All things are possible to him, to her, to those, and to them that believe. Jesus was talking to the man who invited his son, mm -hmm. who was going, going through a whole bunch of stuff. And, and Jesus asked him, how long have you been going through this? He said, as a child, he said, if you can help us, help us. If you can do anything, help us. And Jesus said, well, if you can have faith. Mm -hmm. All things are possible to them. If you believe, all things are possible to them that believe. Mm -hmm. All right, so you must... Believing for the impossible to happen that, that, that you're going through right now, yeah. mm -hmm. turning to be possible. Amen. I said this last time if you can't believe for the impossibility to become possible, you're not going to see the impossibility in like turn possible because you don't believe for the impossibility to turn possible. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I love us a lot. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you have what? Be, have faith, have patience, and you need to be determined. While you're waiting for your healing to manifest, you are believing God that you that He wants you healed. You're believing God for your healing. You have a high expectation for your healing. You are you're confessing your healing, and you're believing that your healing is possible in spite of what the doctor has told you. Amen. Mm -hmm. In spite of what you're going through, you're believing that by His right you are healed, and that the possibility of you being healed is possible. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then while you're waiting for your healing to come past, you must have faith. You must have patience and you must have determination. You must have faith first. Mm -hmm. Then you gotta have patience to wait for you because it just doesn't happen instantly. Amen. I wish it did. Amen. And then you gotta be determined no matter what you're told, no matter what you see, no matter what you're hearing, no matter what the doctor says, no matter what anybody else says, that 
on the I'm standing in submit by his right arm heel, and I'm determined that I ain't going to give you. I don't know what you can but I'm standing. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Then the next thing God said, you need to speak to your mountain. Again, Mark 9, uh, Mark 11, 23, whosoever said to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. What was the mountain? Your mountain is the sickness that fall over. Amen? Mm -hmm. That's your mountain. What is the mountain? A mountain is anything that's standing in your way with the God. The, your mountain is anything that's blocking your blessing. Amen? Your mountain is anything that's causing you problems. In this case, you were looking for healing, so it's sickness. Mm -hmm. So you need to speak to that whatever your condition is, speak to it and tell it to leave your body. Amen? There, there comes that confession again. Amen? Mm -hmm. You should have what you say, what you believe. Amen? It's all about what you are saying. So you need to what? Speak to your mountain. Hold on to that thing because we're going to talk about that a little more. Here we go. And then the last, last thing we covered was you must not doubt, you must not waver, and you must not draw back. Once you believe God for something and stand in the faith for something, you can't on Sunday say, yeah, I got it, and then on Tuesday change your mind. Say, oh, you know what? Maybe it's not coming after all. That's what being double-minded and unstable in all your ways, amen, and you are being you doubtful, you are wavering, and you are drawing back, and, by, and God's word says, and he will have no pleasure in him or her who what? Draw uh, back. Mm -hmm. All right? So, again, for those who are just coming in, if, while you're believing God for your healing, you must first of all understand and believe that he wants you to heal. All right? Then you got to believe for your healing. Have a high expectation that once you look over the scriptures and start studying your scriptures, that your healing is going to come to pass. Amen? And then you got to believe for your healing. In other words, confess your healing. I'm healed. I know I heard you say, doctor, but by your prayer, I'm healed. I believe I'm healed. And I believe that it's going to come to pass. Amen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Believe all things are possible, no matter no matter the situation. I know easier said than done. Let me slow down here. Even though it's easier said than done, you must believe for the impossibility to become possible, and order for you to see the possibility become possible. If you can't believe for the impossibility to become possible, then the impossibility ain't gonna become possible mm -hmm. to you. Why? Because you can't believe for the impossibility to change. Amen. Yeah. It can be possible. Yeah. All right, then you have to have faith, patience, and be de be determined. That your healing is coming to pass. All right. Speak to your illness every chance you get because it will speak to you. Amen. God witness. Amen. If you don't speak to it, it's going to speak to you. And you need to speak to it and tell it to get out of you. Mm. It does not belong in your body. It does not belong to you. The sick and disease does not come from God. He didn't put it on you and, he, and you are not to receive it. Amen. And so you're going to take a stand, having done all stand, that you are to speak to your sickness and tell it to quit. Then you must what? Not doubt. Not waver and not fall back. Okay, so the next 15 minutes, here we go. Here's what I want to talk about. You all with me so far? Mm -hmm. yeah. I know I went by quick. So yep. it's all, these are all I'm going to pick somebody hand up. Oh, hand up. Hand up. Hand all you know that I'm talking about. Amen. All right. And for those who want to pull up the line, these notes are on the Zion prayer line. Mm -hmm. so let's see that in a long time. And excuse me if I feel a little rushed, like kind of do about the whole calm down. Calm down. All right, here we go. What I want to talk about tonight, good to see you. What I want to talk about tonight is use your weapon and your authority. Mm -hmm. Use your weapon and use your authority. In addition to all the other seven steps I just talked about, as far as you believe God for your good, and you have the notes right there, and it looks online, let's get right into it. I've got 15 minutes. Now, here we go. Second Corinthians 10 to 5 says this. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down the strongholds, casting down their uh, arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into the uh, captivity, into the obedience of Christ. Okay, so the weapons as a Christian is not carnal, it's not worldly. And, well, can I kind of that? Well, something I'm talking Basically, here, can I can kind of somebody tell me what is our weapon? What's our weapon that we use as a Christian? Anybody? What's our weapon? Huh? Come on, anybody? anybody. Yeah. What is it? It's the Bible. The Bible. Well, we're in a Here we go. So you keep that in mind. The word of God is our weapon. All right, here we go. Hebrews 4 12 says this. 
For the word of God is, a, a, is a living and powerful and sharper than any two eight sword, piercing even the division or dividing the soul of the spirit and the joints of tomorrow, and the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hebrews 11 12 says, The word of God is what? Our is a two edged, it's a powerful and two edged sword, mm -hmm. which means it's what? Our weapon. Our weapon. However, however, here we go, here we go, here we go. The word of God does not become a two-edged sword and does not become a weapon for you and I until we speak the word of God out of our mouth. Amen? Amen. That's how it becomes a weapon for us. Amen. It's good that you studied it. It's good that you memorize it. It's good that you know from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. You can quote that thing. But if you do not speak the word of God, to the devil and to your mountains, as I said earlier, the word of God is ineffective for you. Amen? Mm -hmm. And then when you go to the devil and you don't speak back to the devil, he's laughing at you because he knows you do not know how to use your weapon. weapon. Amen? Mm -hmm. So the word of God, even though it says it's, it's, a, it's the sword of spirit, and even though it says that it's sharper than any two-edged sword, it is not a weapon or cannot be used as a weapon until you speak it out of your mouth. Amen? Mm -hmm. So 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5 says that our weapon is not carnal, which means we don't use the weapons that the world uses to fight back. We use what? The word of God. Exactly. And in Hebrews 12, 4, 12, that is, and the word of God is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Uh, but however, however, in order for it to be effective in our lives, the way we can use the word of God, you got to have to speak it out of your mouth. And all right, I'm going to demonstrate that for you in a few minutes. Okay, now, moving on to the next verse, which is, here we go. Luke 10, 19. Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. What did God give us? What did he give us? What did, this is in red, by the way, in the Bible. What did Jesus give us? What did he give us? He gave us the authority, amen? But how many know that many Christians don't understand that they have the authority over the devil, amen? You can speak to that turkey and he has to get out of your way. You can speak to your situation, your circumstances, your sickness that you're dealing with and tell it to flee from you. You have what? Because God has given you the authority, amen? Amen. You can listen. Just like, just like okay, and I know gave this to me there as I was thinking about this. When you're... You're, when your kids are born to you, amen, who has the authority? Does, does God have the authority, or, or, or do you have the authority? He's given me. Hello, is, your, is, your, is God going to raise your kids? No, it's you, right? You have the authority to, to raise them how you feel, and the Lord is leading you to raise them, amen? Amen. And, 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 and we're, we're praying that it's what? In the fear and admonition of the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so you have authority. To raise your kids, all right, and you're responsible for raising kids. So, just like you know, God is the ultimate; he, He's the healer, and He's He's all powerful, and He guides and directs our lives. However, He has also given you authority mm -hmm. to deal with the devil on your own. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so you need to use your. He says, "I have given you the authority to trample on the serpents and scorpions, and over all the power." of the enemy. And for those who are just coming in, we're talking about using your weapon and using your authority. So I have talked to you so far about using your weapon, which is the word of God. In order for you to use your weapon, which is the word of God, which is the sword of spirit, you have to speak the word of God out of your mouth mm -hmm. in order for it to become a weapon. Amen? Amen. If you don't speak, then it's not, you're, not, you're not using your weapon. Amen? It's good to study it. It's good to memorize it. That's wonderful. But until you speak it, speak it, it's not useful to you. Amen? You, mm -hmm. The devil's going to stay right there because you're not using your authority. Amen? Okay, here we go. Last thing. James 4, 7 says, Therefore, submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. This is very powerful. Here we go. We're talking about what? Using your weapon mm -hmm. and using your authority. So your weapon is what? The word of God, right? It's the sword of spirit. Mm -hmm. And then he tells us in Luke 10, 19, that he has given us the authority, I'm paraphrasing, mm -hmm. over the enemy, amen? Mm -hmm. And then he tells us, for us, in James 4, 4, 7, 
Commit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, mm -hmm. and he will flee mm -hmm. from you. Well, let me say this, and, and I'm going to be wrapping up here. James 4 and 7, I know I've got witnesses here, mm -hmm. also believe that when they submit yourself to God, therefore, to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. They think, most of us think, just ignore the devil, he's going to flee. Mm -hmm. Hello? Just because you're submitted to God, all you're doing is everything to God, and you're following his ways, and, and he, he says you can resist the devil, and he's going to flee, flee, flee from you. And that's true. That's true. You submit to God, you stay with God, and more than likely the devil's not going to be able to come at you as much as he wants to, right. even though he's still going to attack you, right? Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Here's a revelation for some for some folks. The devil ain't going nowhere until you tell him to. Mm -hmm. You can resist them all you want. Amen. Here, here's a, here's a demonstration. Here's a demonstration of this verse. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. This is what most people, most Christians are doing. I ain't about anything here on the Now I hear what you want me to do. Now I ain't not doing it. No, I'm not calling that girl. No, I'm not going over here with these guys over here. I, I'm not doing it, devil. And guess what? The devil is like this. Just keep just sitting there watching you. And what, what happens? He keeps on messing with you, mm -hmm. right? And messing with you. Why? Because you're trying to resist him by ignoring him, mm -hmm. and all he's doing is following you around. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if you don't, even right now, if you don't resist the devil and tell him to play, he's waiting for you out the car. Mm -hmm. He's waiting for you out the car right now. Amen. And before you get home, the devil will mess all over you because mm -hmm. you're not telling him to play. Amen. So, yeah, okay. Wrap it up. Here we go. Yeah, you learned anything here? Yes. Yeah. Use your weapon and your authority. This is healing school. Mm -hmm. And I told you all about the eight-year list that you need to believe that God wants you to heal. Mm -hmm. You need to believe it. You need to have a high expectation he's going to heal you. You need to confess your healing. Amen. You need to have a, a belief that all things are possible. Mm -hmm. Amen. You need to speak to your sickness and you need to have faith, patience, and determination. Amen. Mm -hmm. And last we got, and last time I was here, don't draw back, amen. Don't quit because if you draw back, God said He will have no, He will have no pleasure in you if you draw back. Don't be double minded, don't read. Okay, mm -hmm. so now you need to what? Use your weapon and use your authority. Your weapon is the Word of God, according to Second Corinthians ten three to five. Mm -hmm. Our our weapons are not carnal. The mighty through the pull of our strongholds. How are we going to do that? Through the word. Amen. Mm -hmm. But then it goes on in Hebrews 4 12 saying that the word of God is sharp and is, is, a, is powerful and sharper than any two edged sword. Well, that's fine. It is. It is powerful and it is sharp. Well, it's not going to be powerful and it's not going to be sharp to you until you speak it out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. And you have to speak. Why? Because if you don't speak, the devil ain't going nowhere. If you don't speak to your mountain, it ain't going nowhere. If you don't speak to your sickness, it ain't going nowhere. Yeah, you can take all the medication. You can believe God for your healing. You can put it around. But if you don't want to confess your healing and then speak to the sickness who's constantly coming at you, I, I, I'll show my hand. I'm not trying to prove this out. How many of you were going through sickness and disease and yet it's laying on them? Yeah, it's still there. Even though you're believing God for your healing. Mm -hmm. You know why it's still there and persisting? It's because we're not saying nothing to it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. We got to tell it that we tell cancer to get, get out of my mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You got to go. Yeah, yeah. Diabetes, you got to go. Got to go. I'm, not, I'm not receiving you. I bind you. Yeah. I you yeah. in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Use your weapon and your authority. Use the word of God by speaking it out of your mouth. God said, Jesus says in, in the New mm -hmm. Testament, he's giving you the power. Yeah. He's giving you the power. Bro. For some reason, we don't like people as much as don't understand that we have power. You have power. And when did you get that power? The moment you gave your Christ your life over to Christ. Mm -hmm. the, the moment you gave your life over to Christ, you have power. Amen? Amen. Amen. So you need to use your power. Now, again, going back to uh, James 4, 17, 4, 7, and we'll go. Start laying hands on people. All right? Resist the devil. Resist mm -hmm. yourself, therefore, God. You visit the devil and he will flee from you. Well, you just again ignoring the devil is not going to get him to flee. Again, you must speak to the devil. So when I say speak to your sickness, speak to your mountain, speak to your circumstances, speak to your problems, and all of, all of the other negative stuff that's in your life, who 
was pretty much bringing it your way mm. to tell her, right? Which means he bombarded you with all kind of thought, bombarded you with all kind of fear, bombarded you with all kind of ideas, and, and get you all scared because somebody else didn't make it, somebody else is going through, and yet you, here you are. And so he's going to tell you, you can't make it either. You got nothing, nothing. Shut up. Okay, okay, okay. Reverend Dickerson gives you permission to say shut up. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay to use that word against the devil. Amen. 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 You have to speak to him. Why? Because you ain't going to speak to him. He's going to speak to you. Mm -hmm. he, isn't he always speaking to you? Mm -hmm. So, my brothers and sisters, as I wrap up, you must use your, your weapon. What's, what's the weapon? What's the weapon? What's the weapon? Right. Right. It's right. Right. the word of God. Mm -hmm. And according to the uh, I don't know, help me out here, boy. Uh, according to uh, Hebrews 4.12, and what? It is the sword mm -hmm. of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. And one more thing, you must use your power and authority. And one more thing about the weapon. I know I'm big myself. So I know these people that don't know the other one. Y'all know Bruce Lee? Yeah. Y'all yep. know Bruce Lee, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Bruce Lee had what kind of weapon? He had the nunchucks, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Nunchucks, nunchucks. I want to call them. I call them nunchucks because if he hits you, you're going to be numb. You're going to be numb. That's, That's what they were for. Bruce Lee had these weapons, right? And man, you see Inner Dragon, those who watch it, man, he's, I'm going at it, right? What yeah. happened Bruce Lee had this, these nunchucks and didn't know how to use it? Mm -hmm. it? It becomes what? Ineffective for him, right? And you can't use it, right? Well, my brother, sister, father, brother, I'm going to close with this. You can't use the word of God if you don't know how to use it. Amen? Yes, it's there to get you saved. It's there to get you healed. It's there to get you set free and delivered. But also, it is your, hello, weapon to use against the devil. And if you don't know how to use it, it is ineffective for you. It, it will not work against the devil. And guess what? The devil knows it when you don't know the word. Amen? The devil knows when you don't know how to use your power and authority. He's sitting there laughing at you. <laughs> I ain't going nowhere. That's because I ain't going nowhere. That's not name because you don't know what to do. He, he's laughing. Why? Because we as Christians, for whatever reason, yes, we read the word, but we don't apply it. Oh, hello. Mm -hmm. Being you what? Doers of the word, mm -hmm. not ears own. Not only do we need to hear the word, we need to apply Apply it to our lives, and the way we apply it to our lives is use the weapon God has given us Amen. and use the authority that God has given us. Yay. How's that? Does that, that sound pretty good? Amen. Now, Amen. It's in your notes. Now, I know this was a quick version mm -hmm. of getting school, but I'm not going to say it. Okay. I'm worried Amen. about it. Use your weapon, use your authority. Amen. What's the weapon? The word of God. Word of God. Mm -hmm. What's the authority? The authority that God has given you the moment you accept Christ into your life. And you, just like all right, just like you speak to your children and tell them to sit and go over there and they obey you, mm -hmm. you got to do the same thing to that rascal, the devil, or he mm -hmm. ain't going nowhere. I know ain't's not a good word, sorry. It's ain't <laughs> ain't he ain't going nowhere, man. Amen. Because we're not doing nothing with the Word of God. Amen. It's your weapon. I, I want that to sink your head when you leave here. Oh, word of God, my weapon, I have to use it. Devil, you heard what the man God said? Get out of here. Get. Amen. And mean it. Amen. But also, it means to submit yourself to God first. Resist the devil, not ignore him. Resist the devil by telling him to get out of your way and get out of your life. Our Father God, thank you for this time. Thank I thank you for this word. I thank Amen. you for another session. Amen. Jesus. Well, I know it was probably quick. I finally spoke it out. I finally got folks across the Father. Thank you. I pray that in the next good years, a lot of things change, heal, separate, and liberate. Thank yeah. you. What I was sharing with them tonight about using their weapon and using their authority. And so now, Lord, I am going to use my weapon and I'm going to use my authority yes. to do what you're called to do and to lay hands on whoever I need to lay hands on. For healing right now in Jesus' name. And I'm believing mm -hmm. by faith. Mm -hmm. So whoever I lay hands on, whoever I lay hands on here or speak it, so that person will be healed. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, I pray. We thank you. We pray you for another night. We give your name all the honor and praise. And ask you to have your way for the rest of the night. In yes, Jesus' God. name, we pray. Yes. Amen. 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 All right. You move your weapon and go. So, real quick, get one in now. 
Anybody need healing? I don't know if you listen. You may have a headache. Uh -huh. You may have whatever pain in your body. You may have pain. Well, I don't know. Whatever the, whatever the problem is, you can. Let me say this. You can right now. You can right now be healed. Right? You can be healed right now. Now, the reason why we're in healing school, because like I said before, I took this to pastor and tell him everywhere else I go, I lay hands on folks and they get healed. Not, not after I leave, they get healed right in front of me. Amen. And not, not just small stuff. I'm talking about people who came on walkers. These guys who are not walkers. That kind of stuff. And I said, Lord, we, I said, I said, Pastor, we need to bring it to Zion. Amen. And, and that's all. I'm, I'm not patting myself on the back. I'm just going to use my gift here. Amen. Amen. And I'm telling you, my faith is going to overcome your faith. Amen. Amen. And, you, and you can be healed right now. And even if you're not here physically, you are going to be healed. Amen. It's a matter of faith. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. It's a matter of faith. Amen. So those who are in the audience and my need to pray for you. Amen. You got to pray for you and then we can take it to prayer. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So bring it. Now put my hand on the Lord back. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to go back right now. Command her back to line up, spine to line up, legs line up, every artery, every tissue, every muscle in the body to line up with your word that by your strength she is and was healed right now. And so, Father, we believe right now Hallelujah. the pain is starting to subside. Hallelujah. And Lord, the shit's as we're going game night, she'll be able to walk around here. Yes, yes. 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 the name is here. Thank, Thank you, God. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, while she is here, the mm -hmm. better state they ever hear she's going to show up. Thank we you. believe it. Yes. You can see it. When it comes up by faith, according to your words, yes. in Jesus' name, be healed, yes. Lord, man. Be healed right now. Yes. 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 You can't get over. Hallelujah. Get out of your way. Get out of your way. Get out of your way. Hallelujah. You ready for this? Uh, I know, I know, I know. I said, yeah. well, this is why we have healing school. I, I need to get I need to get you out of your head. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. The Lord says you are healed. Yes. Yes. All right? So Hallelujah. go ahead. You, you're gonna be able to bend over. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. Now, 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 I don't want you mm. to try to prove me right. Mm -mm. How you feeling? You, to be honest, Hallelujah. how you feeling? Hallelujah. The reason why we have a healing school, right? Because we hear about healing. But no one really sees it demonstrated or understand how it works, right? And what we're doing here is getting, getting, getting her out of her head that she has this back thing, right? And getting her to focus on the word of God and getting her faith to build up my faith into her faith, her faith build up. And all I did was step back and say, go ahead, because you're healed. And, and then all you have to do is act on, act on what you believe, right? Again. Thank I'm you. not trying to get you to make me look good. If you're in pain, tell me you're in pain. If you're not in pain, fine. Yeah. Go ahead and know where Go on do it. Amen. 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 I'm only, I can only do this because I believe. Yeah. Amen. I believe the word of God. Okay. If I did not believe the word of God, I would not be standing here. Amen. Mm. I just know what I can do. Amen. And it doesn't have to wait till tomorrow. It mm. can happen today. Mm. Now, are there some cases that there are, there are more serious than your back pain and it might take some time? 
Yes, but in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, right now, yeah. are you ready right now? Yeah, I'm ready. Are you ready? Right now? Right now? Right now? Right now? Right now? Are you ready? Right now? 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 Right they have to see the change. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I don't have to I do have to see. No, it's okay. But my mouth is turned completely to the I will. Mm -hmm. And over the generation of time, I get those to move to move back. My husband can tell you I took no medication that they had given me. I, once I got out of the hospital, I didn't take any medication. And I believe God is still on the way on this earth. Because it's there, I gave the word that that there is no way that you're gonna. I'm not gonna talk. And I was fearful, and we had the leadership meeting. Yes. Yeah. And I stood up here, and I was kind of taken away at first. Then I got it together, and I spoke because I'm tall, Amen. and you're not gonna be because I'm gonna be. And I continued, and I can see that my mouth is turning back, and I see no way from other things. So like you said, it may not be instantaneously, but sometimes it can be. In the meantime, prior to that, I have three uh, meniscus tears in my mm -hmm. And they want to do surgery on the 27th. Mm -hmm. This happened on the 22nd, and then I was hospitalized. Mm -hmm. So the schedule of this one was the 24th. So I'm believing God. Amen. When I go back to the doctor, they're not going to do our surgery. Amen. She, she's all right. She believes. She believes. Amen. He showed me too many times. He is here. And yes. I believe it that and my husband can yes. tell y'all. And for everyone here, I've been in pain. All right. But so what 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 can't you do right now that you I my saw this knee? This knee, um I can't straighten it completely. Okay. So I still have to have the weight on this side and this okay. thing. All right. Um even when I when I sit down, I have to lift it out so that it can rest so it doesn't bend properly because of the ligaments that's torn. And I have a burning sensation right now in the back of the leg, and that comes from okay. So when is it? Uh, November 27th. All right, so you already claiming mm -hmm. that you won't need surgery. Yep. So I don't want to claim that with you and stand in agreement with you that you will not do surgery. Amen. Amen. But yep. let's say this. But let me say this. Let me say this. Even if you don't need surgery, we still give God the praise. Well, we're believing, believing, yeah. right? So I'm not going against her. That she, uh, that she's here. She's going to be here, right? Mm -hmm. All right. And so I know the struggle. That's all right. All the hands. And all through this, like, but you all understand the game now. You're going to start noticing. You, you, you're like, pay no mind. Because after all, you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, 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 what is this? And then before the Bible testimony that you hear. Okay. Um, all right, because I thought you need no, you, you don't touch me. I'll let your hand. No, you, you. <laughs> I'm not proud of you. All right, here we go. Here we go. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for this little mm -hmm. We thank you, Father, for the for in our life already. The healing has already taken place already. Mm -hmm. And the Father, in the name of Jesus, we claim her healed. And from the top of her head to her feet, we take a we take authority over this knee. Yes, every, Lord. Every muscle, every yes, kidney, Jesus. every vein, every artery, everything that makes the knee function the way it needs to function. The meniscus, the meniscus is no longer torn in the name of the It's healing right now. Yes, it's Lord. Healing. Yes. Right now. as you speak. And Father, in the name of Jesus, yes. Amen. before this night is over, before we go home, yes. Super Bird is going to see a difference. We're going to feel this. I can't even do things you couldn't do before. Thank and you. the name of Jesus. Thank you. On the authority, on the authority of your word, yes. by your stripes, Jesus. this knee is healed. This knee is it being healed right now. In the name of you, and surgery, and surgery, and surgery will not be necessary yes. on mm -hmm. the 27th. Yes, Lord. We pray for it. We give your name all the other We pray for it. In advance, to the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Amen. 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 Woo! Thank you. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay. Wait. Just start throwing things. Just move forward. Just take, take, take your time. And then let the Lord work. Let the Lord work. Let the Lord work. Let the Lord work. So while she's doing that, 
for a quick bit of a moment. I'm going to close. While she's doing that, there's a guy at work. I take this everywhere I go. There was a guy who had a fork truck belt on it because he, he wanted to move. He got stuck in the mud and, he, and they, they pulled it out and he, he tried to get out and it fell on him and it crushed his side. He was out for months, out for months. And I was at work one day and I was carrying my Bible. I was at work one day and the Lord, the Lord came out of nowhere and says, Bob is going to, Bob consistent, is going, is coming back to work tomorrow. And when he does, he's coming right to you to tell you what's wrong with him. And he's going to tell you he needs surgery and he can't raise his arm. And I said, he said, and when he comes, I want you to lay hands on him because I want to hit him. And he's going to tell him he don't need surgery. Well, sure enough, I found all about it. Next morning, sure enough, Bob walks in <laughs> and starts doing everything the Lord said he was going to do. I said, Bob, I already know all about it. The Lord told me I'm going to lay hands on you and you will not yes, need Lord. surgery. He says, okay. And says to the Christian, he already knew what to do, so he released his hand. I laid the hands on him. I claimed him healed. Yes. All right, so now it's time for him to go back to his next appointment where they want to determine if he needs surgery for sure, right? Yes. I said, when you go back to your next doctor appointment, you're not going to need. You'll see, wait and see what God does for you. Yes. Sure enough. He goes, sorry, I'm going in. I said, don't worry about it. It's done. You're not going to need surgery. What do you see? Like, long story short, he had his appointment. He did not need surgery. He could raise his arm and took yeah. everything that I know of. He still hasn't had surgery. Amen. But the fork truck is heavy. It fell. It crushed him. It almost killed him. Amen. What am, what am I trying to say? The power of God is still real today. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 So one thing I, I need to wrap up. Is anybody online who is healing? If not, I'm going to close out. So we need to know. Thank you for coming, everybody. Thank you. Thanks for being here. I'm afraid if you have learned something, take your notes. Take your notes. Amen. And remember, use your weapon and use your authority. Let's pray. Our Father God, thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you for this healing school. Thank you, Father, for the Lord giving the healing. Thank you for the Lord giving in advance. Thank you for the Lord giving in advance. Thank you for the Lord giving We thank you for all those who came. Thank you for this kid right now. Thank you for what you're doing. We give your name all the honor, glory, and praise. We thank you in advance for in advance, what has already taken place, where has been said tonight, bless our pastor where he may be in his family, and all the signs where he may be. Thank you for what you're doing here tonight. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing in advance. Thank you for all the testimonies that have already taken place and testimonies that are coming through. We thank you, we praise you. Give your name all the only one praise. Now bless us as we have game night tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Wait. 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 Wait.